Hey, everybody. Do, do, do. All right, welcome back to another episode called Confession Time. That sounds exciting, right? <laughs> I am going to be sharing a confession with you. Um, so a few weeks ago, it was my birthday and a wonderful day. So thanks to all the sweet messages I got. Um, I read all of them and I loved all of them. So thank you, thank you. I appreciate all that. I also did a whole podcast episode a few weeks ago all about my birthday and how to have an amazing birthday or anniversary or holiday, anything like that. Basically being really clear of what you want. If you want something, being very clear to people, don't expect them to read your mind, right? This is what exactly what I'd like. Actually, I bought it and it, I'm just putting a note on it from you, right? Just basically being in charge of the day and creating an amazing day, day for yourself. So. Did I have an amazing birthday? Absolutely. Um, but time for my confession. So I recorded that episode a week before my birthday. I was feeling confident and amazing and I knew I was just going to create the most amazing day ever. Then a few days after recording that podcast, I believe it was a Sunday evening, I started feeling pretty annoyed with my husband about my birthday. So let me give you some context about my birthday. I have had some major struggles with my birthday ever since I was a little kid. So I have, there are six kids in my family, right? So I have five siblings and I have a sister with a birthday at the end of September, a sister with a birthday three days before mine and then my birthday. When I was a kid, I felt like every time I got to my birthday, everybody was birthdayed out. Nobody wanted cake anymore. Maybe my mom was tired of making cake. Everybody was tired of presents and doing all those things. So it was interesting. Some years I could tell you exactly what my presents were because they were exactly what my sister got, just in a different color. So I'd already, I'd already had some issues about not feeling special on my birthday. So when I got married, I was so excited that finally somebody was going to make a huge fuss about my birthday. And that very first birthday, my husband did a surprise party for me. It was really fun. It was amazing. However, the next year I was actually giving birth to our son. And so I had my one year all by myself. And then my birthday was now joined with my oldest son. So I have had some weird hangups with my birthday. I thought I had worked through all of this because all during other holidays and anniversaries, and Mother's Day, everything like that, I have shown up in a really awesome space that I really wanted to be where I wanted to be, right? But apparently I still had some lingering feelings and angst about my birthday. So my husband is not a big birthday or holiday guy. My kids have actually laughed like, is dad going to dress up for Halloween? And I go, friends, do you think dad's going to dress up for Halloween? What's he going to tell you he's going to be? And every year he's a serial killer because they look just like everybody else. <laughs> Maybe once or twice for a party we've gone to, he's dressed up, but he, it is not his thing to do big on holidays or anything like that. Um, if I went out of town on his birthday, he couldn't care less. He's been out of town on his birthday and he really didn't care. He's like, good, now I don't have to worry about it, right? So he does know I care, so he really does put forth effort to do something special for me. Well, it was the Sunday night before my birthday. My husband told me that he might be going out of town on my birthday. And I started feeling butthurt. That's the best word I can come up with how I was feeling. So I was a little bit upset about that. And uh, then he found out he didn't have to go out of town. So I thought, great, fantastic, this is gonna be amazing. He said, but I am gonna go to Young Men's that night. So for those of you who are not members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, our church has weekly activities for the youth and he serves with the young men and he wanted to make sure that he went and supported them with the activity and all those types of things. Now I was really feeling butthurt. Did I do any self-coaching? Absolutely not. Did I take some time to think about this and look at it from different angles or his perspective or get a clear picture? Nope, not even a little bit. I went straight to butthurt and stayed there. So instead of doing those other things from butthurt, <laughs> sorry, that's really the best emotion I can describe. Instead of relaxing or having a conversation or just being calm about it and getting clear about things, we had, 
I don't want to even say hate, heated because it wasn't um, it wasn't a fight or it wasn't like that, but it was definitely not a very fun conversation, a discussion about my birthday with me saying things like, I can't believe you would do this. I can't believe you would choose to do something on my birthday and all those types of things. Now, please don't paint my husband in a bad light that he's not big about birthdays. He does so many other amazing things. He is super nice. Birthdays just aren't a huge deal to him. So he thought, I'll just go stop by the activity. He only wanted to go by for a few minutes and then we'd go out as a family. So in his mind, like I'm going to kill two birds with one stone, right? Um, so we ended up talking late into the night. Everything was figured out without yelling or name calling, but I still had shown up in a way that I wished I had not and hoped I wouldn't do anymore. So why am I sharing this confession with you? couple of reasons. First of all, I want to be very real. Very real that I am so human. That even though sometimes I have grandiose ideas and I'm very intentional, I am still human. And sometimes I still show up in a way that I don't love. After this happened, I actually almost canceled the episode and tried to hurry and record another one. Um, just because I thought, well, great, I can't do this now because I, I got all upset about it, right? Another reason I want to share this with you is because you always have to be managing your mind. It doesn't matter how many self-help books you've read. It does not matter how many coaching workshops you've been to, how many private coaching calls you've had, how many group coaching sessions you've had. Things will continue to pop up in your life and you will need to continue to decide how you want to think, feel, and act about it. Because you're not a robot, and I'm definitely not a robot, you are going to show up in ways that you wish you didn't do, right? I'm sure I'm not the only one who can look back and think, Ugh, I really, really wish I wouldn't have done that or said that or, or did that, right? So now we get to do what I did after that. <laughs> and because we none of us are robots, I hope that my confession will then help you when you also show up in a way that you wish you had not. So this is what I do and this is what I um, encourage my clients to do when they do something like this when they show up in a way that they wish they hadn't. I love to do a replay of the situation and do a thought download and this can look like a journaling, right? Or even just really in tune thinking about it. I like journaling because it gets all those thoughts out onto paper, right? But do like a whole thought download of what went on, right? This is everything that was going on. It was my birthday, blah, 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 blah. All the things that you're thinking and feeling. Then you can start sifting through and say, what's a fact? What do are not facts, right? Start sifting through that. And then start getting clear. What was I thinking about the facts? How did I feel about those thoughts? How did I show up when I was feeling that way? Then, you can say, how do I wish I would have shown up? What would I need to feel to do those actions? What thought do I need to have to feel that feeling? So here's what it looked like for me. My thought was something along the lines of my husband shouldn't do anything else on my birthday. Feeling butthurt. Action, get defensive, get critical, and cry. Then I made a plan for next year because my birthday is going to come back around next October. The next year, if something happens and he's going to need to be out of town, he schedules something, whether intentionally or not intentionally, I want to think, how do I want to show up? So for me, I thought about it and I thought my actions would be to just talk to him about how I was feeling without being critical right? So without accusing or like you're doing this to me or that's so hurtful or whatever, just talk to get a better understanding. So that would include asking a lot of questions. Um, and it's so interesting because when I got to hear his point of view and ask questions, it was so different than what I was creating in my mind. Um, another thing of action, I want to try to see things from his point of view, right? So how do I need to be feeling in order to do those actions? I wrote understanding. If I want to be unfeeling understanding, my thought then is my husband's thoughts matter too. And as I went back through, 
right? So when I think my husband's thoughts matter too, then I'm understanding with his actions. And then I can get curious, ask questions, see things from his point of view and talk to him from that space of understanding. And we can just have a really nice conversation without it ending in tears or being frustrated and all those types of things. So you can use this with anything. You don't like the way you showed up with your in-laws? Run a replay, then make a forecast. You don't like what you said to your kids during school? Run a replay, make a forecast. Basically, you keep doing this and as you want to evolve into the best version of yourself. Um, I actually was thinking about do this on repeat until you die, really, because you will continue to make mistakes and you will continue to be human. You're going to say things you didn't mean to say, or maybe you meant to say, and you're like, I wish I don't, didn't feel like saying those things, right? Whatever that is. And if you are willing to do that, you will keep evolving into the best version of yourself because you're going to be very intentional about managing your mind so that you will be, so next year with my birthday, to be much more intentional like, ah, I have a tendency to get butt hurt about what my husband does or doesn't do, but I would rather be understanding. So I'm just going to get curious or whatever it is and maybe get to the point where um, I just go and do something fun, right? My son is old enough now, he's an adult, and so maybe he'll want to start doing his own thing. So maybe I'll go out of town. Maybe I'll go do something completely different or whatnot to make sure I get to create the day I want to. So as you do this, I want you to have so much love and compassion for your humanness. You weren't meant to be perfect. You weren't meant to be a little robot that makes no mistakes, never does anything wrong. You're totally supposed to be human. And you can choose to um, be mad at yourself, hate yourself, or you can choose to love yourself and have compassion. And as if you want to choose to love yourself and have compassion, you know what will be amazing is you'll start to have more love and more compassion for other people and their humanness too. All right, friends, I love you all so much, and I will talk to you next week.